We are less than a month away from crowning our winner, but first we have to get through the modeling round. Welcome to the next great starship. I'm Sandy Gardner. I'm welcoming our judges, Chris Olivia. Uh, my name is Chris Olivia. I'm Chief Visual Officer. Chris Smith. I'm Chris Smith. I'm the lead ship artist. Uh, Chris Roberts, Project Director, Star Citizen. Sean Tracy, CryEngine Evangelist. Uh, Mark Skelton, Art Director for CIG Austin. This is the end of the modeling and texturing phase part of the competition. Yeah. Mark, you want to tell us what that's about? Sure. From the concept phase, uh, they flesh out the, the model, um, becomes a actual virtual object inside the, inside the game, which is awesome. Uh, we can actually see it, um, do turnarounds of it, look at it from all angles, which is important. Um, they start adding textures and shading to it, which brings it to life, makes the metals look like metal and um, the, the, like the, the paint jobs and all that stuff comes online. So it's, it's an important um, part in the next step of, of making it complete. So, and it's a huge step. Actually, in the process, the main step. <laughs> in the process of the whole, the whole process of the uh, like making a ship, this is a, this is absolutely the the biggest, longest step in that process. So. All right, we know the deal. Five teams we're going to see today, but only two can go through to the next round. Three will go into the safe pool. Are you guys ready? How are we feeling? Let's do it. Yeah, let's Great. see some cool. I'm trips. excited. Pumped it's getting up. difficult. And the first team we're going to look at is Shard Collective. Mm -hmm. Let's roll the video. Hello RSIN community, this is Shard Collective here. We really appreciate all the feedback from judges and fans alike and have done our best to incorporate all the ideas we liked best into our design. At the request of the community we have reworked the tail, changed the turrets to be semi-retractable, as well as modified thruster and wing locations to maximize turret fire coverage. This is our final textured model, in the next minute we are going to show some animation renders that are untextured due to time constraints. In our texturing work, we made a careful effort to emulate the style of existing Origin ships as well as to give a scale reference. The AX-114 Boomsling will be a sleek, functional, luxurious, and heavy-hitting gunship. Here are some animations demonstrating some ship functionality, such as the front landing gear, the front turret, the main exit elevator, the pilot emergency exit, the rear ramp deployment, the refueling probe, and the front thruster functionality. Here are some images of the ship's interior. And here's the final textured model ready for in-engine implementation. And again, in closing, we'd just like to thank the judges and the community for all their support. And we hope to see you in the next phase of the competition. Thanks. Mark Skelton, is that in your favorites? I think it is. This ship is like one of my, it's definitely high up on my list. I love the design of it. It's got like a really nice, like, 
kind of helicopter, burly gunship feel. Um, it's also got some nice sleek lines, which is cool in the front, and, and I love that, you know, that like we were talking about in the concept, that big boom that comes out, makes the whole ship way nicely. I thought the inside was nice, it was clean. I like how they, he like took kind of a chance with like the, um, the glass bits on the interior. Um, so I think that would be kind of cool, like when you're walking through, you could see like basically all the way down the ship that way. Man, as a whole, it's like one of my favorites. It's really cool. Sean? Yeah, I really like it. I like the interior. Um, it could be a little bit higher poly in the interior, I think, because some of these things yeah, are going to be looked at really done. close. I mean, I saw some of the, uh, some of the bits, like the um, they're little tubes with a, a rack on them, but it was super obvious, the polygon edges and things like that on there. Um, but yeah, otherwise the uh, exterior materials look really good. Mm -hmm. I think the interior materials need a little bit more work though. That's yeah. All. Was that, that wasn't finished materials on the inside though? Well, no, I don't think, I don't think so. he's got I don't right. think so. Yeah. He said time, res time, time restraints. Time restraints. Yeah, that's right. right. I, I yeah. love the interior. I mean, I, I like the ship a lot. Um, I think it's really cool looking. Yeah, I think once they get into this, um, the final textures and the little detail call outs in the interior, it's yeah. going to be like one of my favorite interiors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a powerful, beefy-looking ship. Um, I like that it's still sort of very long-feeling and you know, and sleek, like you were saying. It sits kind of really low to the ground. The, it's not like too raised up when the landing gear is deployed. It's, it makes it feel big and heavy. I have nothing really negative to say about it. I'm, I'm digging it. It's one of my favorite ships as well. It's definitely got a cool style overall to it. The texturing was also cool. I mean, the outside hole texture, I wish uh, there would have maybe been some more close-up shots because it was yeah. cool to see all the little panel lines on that last shot where it was close-up. From far away, it just kind of looked all gray. It was hard to tell. It looked cool, but I just wish there were some more close-up shots. I just, I was going to say the interior, it was a very, even though it's unfinished, it was a nice way to show off the modeling in the interior the way he used um, basically the, the gray like a light gray, dark gray, and then yeah, just the color broke it up. Yeah. yeah, he broke it up uh, for like, you know, right. like an initial breakup of color. They did a really good job of evoking like the origin sense of fit, yep. style, mm -hmm. and feeling. Uh, you know, I really like the front cockpit area. I like uh, how they laid out the interior. The animations themselves could probably be a little better, a little more fidelity, but um, I really like it. I don't really have many criticisms at all. I think they're doing a really great job. And, yeah. and I, I like the look of the ship. So mm -hmm. if you're going with that sort of, okay, we're going with the gunship and sort of we're going to be inspired by sort of a helicopter gunship mm -hmm. as our sort of like touchstone of design, I think this is probably one of the most successful ones mm -hmm. we have that have gone that way. So uh, yeah, I think uh, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorites. All right, a lot of love for this team, but there's four other teams to look at. Let's take a look at One Bit Amoeba. <laughs> One Bit Amoeba. Hey, One Bit Amoeba here, and I present you the latest version of my gunship. I made a lot of progress, but still, there's a very, very long way to go. Show you the new cargo ramp. It's for cargo, of course, and for the mar marines to enter the ship. Okay, let's go into the ship and have a look at the layout. Behind the cargo ramp is a cargo hold. There's just a few container dummies here. There will be a door here, and behind that door you can see the docking device which you saw in the previous video left and right will be doors too we have the bunks access to the turrets and some seats here the right side for the missile launcher the room the left side two more bunks access to the turret toilet here toilet yes this is a toilet. <laughs> There's a the kind highest, of shower room. The highest poly object in there. Now, all of this interior stuff is, as you can see, obviously not finished yet. And in the center here, there's a small ladder, and up here is supposed to be the kind of machine room with the power generator and 
the shield generator and this kind of stuff. Down here on the way to the cockpit, the second entrance here, the ladder, basically for the normal ship crew, for the pilots and the gunner, would enter through this. And then in the front here, two more seats. And the cockpit, of course. Let's have a look at the bunks again. They are the most complete interior. Here we are in the cry engine again with the basic hull material setup. And I added the cockpit to get a feeling how it looks like inside the cockpit. Chris Smith. Well, well, well. You should start with Chris. Please. So, um, I do like the ship. Uh, the ship looks cool on the outside and everything. And actually, you know, the beginning stage of his texturing looked cool. Uh, those little pieces he had that were <coughs> that had like a tile texture on it uh, was a good start. Although, you know, the interior obviously wasn't done, but it, it seemed like he was pretty far away still from actually, you know, like getting it to a point. You know, he's, I mean, he's, it's all very basic block out, so it's hard to judge at this point. It would help probably to have some characters in there on the interior. I mean, he did the walkthrough, which was cool, but it was still, like, it was hard to get a sense of, like, how tight things are or how, you know, if a character is be able to, you know, fit down that walkway or something. So it was really, it was kind of hard to tell. The general, like, shape of the ship uh, is good, um, but, I mean, I feel like it's, too low poly, low res. Yeah. It's just like the very beginning. Yeah, I mean, you know, just especially compared to, you know, like what we just saw on the Shard Collective ship, some of the other ones we've seen are just sort of like the level of like fidelity of detail that we're going for is, is you know, you, you really want to sort of, you know, have everything like be super like first person uh, detailed, but like on whole ship because you're going to go and ride it. And so it sort of feels like that's got a long ways to go. Yeah. Uh, to get there, so I, you know, uh, not that I would like specifically say, well, I don't like this bit. It's just kind of hard to tell on some of the stuff because the interior block out so right. simple right now. Um, and, and that's where he kinda, spent most of the time in his videos, just running around the interior. Yeah, and it's kind of hard like to know progress. how far he can take his block out, mm -hmm. right? So even the exterior of the ship, which is definitely more advanced than the interior of the ship, for me is still too low poly for what we're going for, right? It needs to have like more detail, more nice little bits of greeball. Um, it just sort of, it, it feels like it's something that would work well in a game, you know, six years ago where you had less, few polygons to push around. But the overall like idea and the functionality and stuff is good. The look is good, the feel is good. Yeah, it's got I a just, cool shape I language. I just wish it had been further along in, in the process and I can't tell from yeah. the video that, can you get all the way in the process or not? That's a question. And some of the, the final shots he went through really quickly it's just like the presentation yeah. was kind of poor I thought where you can tell um, you know the, the finished piece very well it looks like he got really caught up on the toilet the toilet is about the most high poly <laughs> thing within yeah. there and it actually <laughs> it impressive. looked pretty cool but if the rest of the interior looked just as good but maybe not get so caught up on the toilet and, 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 the bed. and, and finish some of the other things and the bed yeah. um, and the bed that toilet looked like you actually put your legs in there and it was like a, like a diaper is that what that looked like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I think it was maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that may be like how they actually do it on like zero g yeah. 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 so it doesn't float away like yeah. so I was happy to see the ship and engine but then I was a little bit confused because half the ship wasn't there um, and it wasn't that the interior wasn't there it was that half the ship wasn't actually yeah, there. Yeah I, I think he was because uh, I know like on the shotgun pages we went back and forth he was trying to figure out how to texture and do stuff in the engine. Right. So yeah. he spent a lot of time like on how he was going to do the material so he basically got to that level and wasn't and that focusing on the modeling at the moment until he figured out how he got it into mm -hmm. the engine. The looking, materials I see. That's something right. he was happy with. That's about it. Mark? Um, yeah I like the exterior obviously the, the interior okay so from what I could tell which was hard was to tell, low poly. like what was going on. Yeah, from what I could tell, it was low poly. <laughs> Fair assessment. Um, when you, when you're walking back, it was weird that like the the EVA hatch was like the point at which the split happened, the Y. So you actually would have to walk over the EVA hatch to like go right or left off of the split, mm. which seemed a little weird. It seemed a little 
clunky to me. And also, the way the bed like came out, like the way that it level or out, and then, that was, was a little strange. Yeah. It, it looked kind of magic, right. <laughs> magic y, so. It's a little strange. I do like the outside though. It does look cool. I like the shape. Feels like a, you know, like I think we were, t uh, Hobbins was calling it a toad or something because it was kind of <laughs> ugly and flat, mm -hmm. which is cool. It's cool. It's, it's a cool, like ugly wide. ship. The rear yeah, door was kind of interesting. That it kind of had multiple, multiple stages of opening. You know, oh, yeah, the opening just thing that like was interesting. Yeah. Thing, so yeah. kind of, that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like we like the exterior. Mm -hmm. but, um, a little work on the interior, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Let's check out the next team, Shimapan. Hey, it's Alan from Team Shimapan here, here to show off the latest iteration of our Drake Brutus gunship. Um, here are some our uh, hit model in engine with some uh, work in progress textures. Here you can see the engine with the side open, so you can see the interior that we modeled. And uh, here's the beginnings of the interior of the drop pod without furniture, but uh, we have those in coming in for Maya pretty soon in the next few days. So um, here's some uh, prelim models, for, we also have those coming in soon from Maya. And uh, let's show the opposite view with the, um, uh, I think it's the other side with the cowling on. And here's some high poly renders for the stuff that we've been working on in Maya that haven't been baked yet. But you can expect them in the next few days for these to be baked and uh, at least get some preliminary texture maps on them. So um, yeah, that's that. And uh, here to show off some of the additional animations we've um, made. Or basically on the um, on the non game ready models. So uh, here's a gray box actually for the uh, new airlock for the um, squad deployment. And I think there's one more thing, and then uh, the rest of it. And then um, let's go ahead and just draw some more some more detexturing and models. So uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Chris oh. I'm uh, torn because I, I mean I the, the amount of uh, detail and the modeling um, quality is really nice and you can tell they, they know mechanical callouts and it's just a lot of it's really nice but the overall shape I'm not liking very much anymore for some reason um, yeah, it's the ship. same shape that was in the concept though it hasn't changed well, maybe I didn't like that concept. You may not. Well, he I honestly anymore. think it's the materials that he you're seeing on the outside of the ship. Be you can't read the shape um, right now. That's all. Yeah. I, and it I mean, the, awesome. a lot of the interiors are really nice. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah. I mean, it just uh, the the bricks on the materials were like throwing me off a little bit and stuff. Um, yeah, that's what it almost feels like they applied a, like a brick, like a material that's in the standard it's material and it and put <laughs> made it look yeah uh, like heat shield. Heat shield. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm torn, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Are Confused. You are you torn too, Chris Smith? Um, a little bit maybe, but maybe not as much as Chris O. <laughs> Chris O is really torn. <laughs> He's really torn. Okay. Torn in uh, half. No, it's, yeah, uh, they had some really great detail in the landing gear, obviously, and everything. Yeah, speaking to the overall style of the ship, I actually kind of like it. It's interesting, but, yeah, it's not the most beautiful ship either, but it is interesting enough in the front, you know, cockpit um, takes, you know, a lot of cues from, like, the helicopter design, sort of with that little nose, totally. you know, boom, with the stuff underneath it. Chris Roberts. Yeah, no, I, I really liked it. So uh, I think they are just let down by their sort of material texturing choices on it because uh, in terms of the like modeling uh, and even an engine, which like most of those 3D shots moving around were actually an engine, yeah. uh, it was really good. I really liked the like high poly detail like in the cockpit mm. and yeah, the some, of awesome. the, some of the other like places they were giving you the close up details is that's, that's kind of what I've been talking about where like we are going for that level of detail in our ships, which is like you would not, you would normally never see in a game, and maybe you would see in like a pre-rendered cinematic or something like that. But that's what we're trying to put in the game, and so they've really they've hit it there because you you would feel that okay, I could sit in this cockpit in first person, right up close to it, and it wouldn't feel like it's breaking down. Uh, so all that I loved like the engine detail, the nacelles at the back. I mean, those really felt yeah, those cool. Awesome. The thrusters were cool. Yeah, yeah so I, I, you know, and, and they looked like the interiors, you could move around, and they, so all of that was really good, and yeah, for whatever reason, on the exterior rendered shot, it's like there's some weird material choices, there's like the brick texture, and there's a few other things, but I, I don't think that's that big of an issue, but yeah, no, I, I like it, and in, in some ways it's sort of, uh, uh, you know, I'm kind of encouraged seeing like how f much further they took the detail on the parts from like the because you know, in concept, they'd already blocked it out. Mm. 
but they've taken it from the concept block out to another stage that has a lot more details. I agree. It's, uh, God, the modeling is fantastic. You know, they really thought it through. Um, the animation was really good, like the way things worked. I, I do like the ugly duckling look that it has. I, you know, I, the broken neck thing, it's kind of different. It's cool. I like it. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know what was with those heat, <laughs> <laughs> the heat things, the, uh, the brick pattern. But easily fixable, you mm -hmm. know. I think if they look at it again and work on it, I think it could, it could be like, you know, one of the nicest ships we have in this competition. Yeah, definitely same comments. I love the broken lines look of the, 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 of the overall ship. Um, uh, it's very, very cool looking. The interior is fantastic. The modeling <coughs> is, is really high detail. And like Chris is saying, um, you know, that's the level of detail that, that Star Citizen is going for. When you're really up close, you got to see these details. But at the same token, it's not just the geometry. It's also those materials have to be just as believable. That's okay. the thing. So you got to give the same love um, mm -hmm. to the materials as well because you could have the highest poly ship in the world, but if it looks, you know, gray boxed or something like that, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be so fantastic. However, I know these guys can do it because their weapon, uh, when they did their weapon in the first yeah. couple episodes, it was over the top in terms of materials and textures. It was one of the best, I easily. Remember, yeah. So there's no question that they can do it. Uh, they probably just ran out of time and spent a lot of time on the interiors, which is all right. So I mean, really, best ship of the day for me. All right, best ship of the day for Sean. Three Dingo is next. Hey, yo. Hello from Three Dingo. Yeah, I know we don't look so good. Maybe for the... the the zombie face, but uh, we are here, uh, unfortunately, this week uh, and the week before, there was so many egg and uh, down moments, uh, much more down than egg, but uh, we are here and this is our ship. Yo! Yo! As promised, we have made change to the exterior by, the, uh, by adding that extra touch to make it more special and particular. We worked uh, better at the modeling and texture part, but uh, as mentioned in the introduction, we could uh, not fit everything in the video. We have a lot of material ready and the uh, other one not really complete, so we decided to not show a fusion between the two. We are aware that this will penalize us, but the rest will be ready very soon, so we don't uh, get discouraged. We moved the two rear engine on the front wing, as a result of the physical test that we did. We created a system of gears on the top of the wing and a gimbal uh, engine for the vertical thrust. We reduced the number of the skip pods uh, from uh, 12 to 8 and studied a system of expulsion. We are thus the number of the small wing, transforming them and making them useful. And we have the bolt and enlarged the uh, back engines. And the tier 2 remaining changed, contributed to the role of the ship. We also made changes to the missile launcher to make it more aggressive. And uh, yeah, for now, this is our ship. Uh, we are working, we are working so hard. For now, yo from Tredingo! You want to kick this one off? <laughs> kick it yeah. off, Chris. The front of it looked really cool, right? So uh, I wish we'd seen something inside because I sort of, and I think I remember when I was looking at some of that stuff earlier, they were blocking stuff out in, in their sort of mid-update. Um, so it's kind of weird that they didn't actually show us any interior stuff. You know, the front nose section's really cool. There's a lot of uh, like material texture detail in there. It's good. Uh, potentially a little too busy, I would say, maybe sort that's, of midsection to the back section. That's what I was. But, uh, you know, it definitely, I mean, I kind of felt like that front nose almost felt like a walrus or something. Mm -hmm. Had so, those two little... Yeah, it was like the anvil wa walrus. 
<laughs> uh, which would be a good name for a, a, yeah. a gunship. Yeah. Um, I get to name all the gunships. <laughs> Number, <laughs> yeah, you, you already have your silverback. <laughs> They've definitely like, sort of fleshed it out, right? So compared to sort of their uh, concept, final concept, and sort of their modeling updates, they've definitely put a lot more like bits uh, on the middle towards the back end. You should take some of, it, of those bits out. And so, and some of it's cool, and some of it may be too much. Yeah, too many notes. What can I say? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> As Salieri would say. Right. Anyway, uh, but no, generally, mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I like it, but don't love it, and those are my criticisms. You're torn. You must be torn. I'm torn. I'm right. torn, as Chris <laughs> Lillier would say. <laughs> are we back torn on this couch again? Actually, they seem very far ahead on the exterior, you know, and this model. Uh, maybe that's why the interior, uh, you know, maybe they didn't, they didn't get far enough on the interior and didn't show it or something. So, yeah, I was missing the, some shots in the interior. The texturing looked cool. Uh, it, you know, it had some nice wear and everything, and the color breakout was nice. Um, I'm not sure, like, some of the decals and stuff seem a little low res, perhaps. Uh, maybe they, they can look at that. Um, as far as the modeling, the model itself goes, it looked clean. Uh, it was hard to tell. You know, there was no wireframe or anything. But yeah, look good. I agree with Chris. You know, the front end was really cool looking, very powerful uh, design. And then it kind of trails off weird in the back. And yeah, the frequency is like too much, as Mark would say, frequency. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just <laughs> constant clutter back there. Yeah, give the eye some rest, you know, as it flows towards the back over the ship you know but um overall yeah i mean i like it it looks like a cool ship you know to just need some more work the, the shape i think is um my favorite part just the overall shape it's got a really interesting feel to, but again it's just so much going on and all these like pieces and it just you know it was like very um flat lit so it was kind of like it wasn't a great sort of like presentation of, of I mean it was uh, kind of sexy when they had like sort of the 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 light DJ reveal thing of course yeah when was it like, was I was actually thinking boom, that they were like oh, yeah, this yeah. thing where it's sitting in a hangar and the lights yep. are coming on in the hangar where it's yeah, yeah. they just teased like, like they room. just got Maya viewport yeah right. yeah was, and, and so then uh, yeah so that was kind of a bit I was, was like all set up for I was set up for something like super stylish I was dancing I was like oh this is really cool yeah it just sort of felt like that I mean that would have been pretty you know Theatrical, dramatic, it would have been fun. Totally. But, yeah. Um, so it's just it, there's just a lot of like similar sort of size. Again, we talked about this before, like uh, detail where there wasn't places for your eye can rest, and there wasn't like smaller like detail callouts. I mean, I think the shape is a really pretty shape, um, powerful looking, um, like Christmas was saying. But um, it's just too much blockiness and stuff going on for me to love it. Okay, Sean. Uh, I think I agree ge generally with uh, most of the, most of the comments that the frequency was pretty high. I mean, the materials look really good uh, on the exterior. Yeah, a little low res, but again, I think it's that's hard from to tell from the video. Maybe it was just capturing from my yeah. viewport or whatnot, and it looked like they did sort of a half render where they had the the fun lighting and everything like that, um, and then it just kind of rolled into. Again, just on the presentation side, maybe a little uh, lackluster. Um, and when comparing it up against the other teams, um, actually, and though there was animation shown. It's probably not up to the same level as actually most of the other teams are, um, and maybe that's because of the design. Maybe there's a little bit less moving parts on the exterior, or so so that m maybe is not a fair criticism. But I would say that uh, yeah, the animation was not quite as high level as I'd seen the other teams. But do. we love moving parts on ships. But we love moving parts on ships. Try to ship. see that on, on, yeah, on, t on ships. <laughs> yes, there's a bit of a Freudian there. Yeah. I totally agree. They uh, they stole my line. With the right. Then nothing else is to be said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest thing. Is I like the shape, just like Chris said, Olivia, and I love the like just the overall silhouette of it. But man, it's so there's just so much little stuff to look at. It ruins the the whole thing, and that could be fixed pretty easy, I think, if they just like you know go back through it, um, take some stuff out, and concentrate their um, their greebles. I think it was certain places. I think it was hard to tell, like the size of the ships. Yeah. Like there was no reference of like, oh, that is a familiar right. thing that's really small on there, and so right. it, it looked like mm -hmm. a, it could be like a really small toy ship or something. Right. It kind of looked. It kind of threw me off. See, we don't even have an idea of how big the cockpit is within, because uh, they didn't right. even show any no, of the interior. No, yeah, and no, I mean, no. to be fair, against the other teams, like we're judging the interiors pretty harshly, anyways. Mm -hmm. And to not show us an interior, that's a pretty big uh, yeah. problem. Agreed. Okay, so maybe some breaks in frequency and uh, working on the interior. 
So the last team to look at is Four Horsemen. Let's roll the video. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Aegis Dynamics Redeemer Gunship. Please enjoy. The Aegis Dynamics Redeemer Class Gunship is the new top of the line gunship. Manufactured by Aegis Dynamics, designed specifically for piracy interdiction and police action. The Redeemer comes by default with two internally mounted Class 3 missile racks, two Class 5 gunner operated turrets, and one Class 4 operated turret with two Class 1 hardpoints. The Redeemer gunship is designed to be operated by a crew of three, one pilot and two gunners, while still having space available for six marines to engage in boarding action. The Redeemer is capable of holding a Class 5 power plant and a Class 5 shield generator, enabling it to bring sustained and heavy firepower into any encounter without sacrificing survivability. This gunship also sports a complement of 10 universal upgrade slots to allow any operator to customize his Redeemer to suit any mission specific needs. The marine compartment of the gunship comes equipped with six jump seats positioned alongside a boarding hatch. Here you will also find storage lockers equipped with space or combat armor for the marine crew. The Redeemer comes equipped with small armory next to the belly turret gunner access port. The engineering compartment is equipped with Aegis Dynamics patented state-of-the-art force shield projectors and comes with high precision and high fidelity monitoring tools for optimal performance and in-combat tuning. The engineering compartment offers any engineer easy access to all the important gunship components. With the exception of the main engine nacelles, which are designed to be replaced completely within minutes at any well-equipped space dock. The living quarters come equipped with all the basic facilities a crew might need for extended deployments in deep space, such as fully equipped kitchen. Yeah, the exterior, the exterior, the exterior, 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 exterior is not exterior. bad, but the interior is just like mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bed for every crew member, which also doubles it and, and it's all in engine, it's ready, it's ready to go. Yeah, However, There's a coffee maker. This, yeah, this, is, this, is, this is Disney. The living quarters style. also yeah, provide piercing. access to the top mount of the five turret. As you can see, the Aegis Dynamics Redeemer gunship is the next great starship to join the lines of the UEE in the battle against the Vandal. Yeah, that looks awesome. Order your very own Redeemer gunship and become a horseman today. Sean, Tracy, what about all the in-engine stuff? It, fantastic. Yeah, it looks like a final asset to me. Um, that's as far along as I've seen any of the teams. Uh, the interior was super well detailed, all the materials were looked at, all the materials were all balanced really nicely, there's a really good consistency in the interior, and that's actually really hard to get without the PBR renderer, is to get these uh, the consistency with Fresnel and Specular and things like that across the interior, it looks phenomenal. Um, I, li I actually like the exterior of this ship, um, it reminds me of an old Corsair or something like this, it's a very sleek um, shape, um, but then it's got the kind of Gundam, I, I don't even know what to call them, uh, I mean these, the engines pliers. are just pliers, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah perfect, yeah. Uh, but I like that because it just, it just breaks up the sleekness of that shape on the edges, uh, I love it and it's all in engine, um, so <laughs> it was just super super impressive, uh, that would have been you know at home in Crisis or any of these, you know, AAA games. It, that's that's right up there. So, new favorite ship of the day, I would say. Well, what well. about you, Mark? Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome, man. That interior is the best that I've seen of any mm -hmm. of the. I mean, as far as like, you know, material breakup and um, even their lighting was good in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt like um, kind of cramped, like a spaceship, which was cool, mm -hmm. and. I love like those big things on the wall. Like uh, I'm not sure what those were, but they looked really interesting. Like when you're walking big in that corridor yeah. and they're like right in your face. That's really cool. Um, the exterior. I mean, it was, it's just it's a pretty ship. And how it's about just, the narration? Yeah, that was good too. Yeah, she's got a great that. voice. She's good sci-fi voice. Stop being creepy. Right. Uh, that's not <laughs> creepy. So yeah, it's definitely up there. This is one of my favorites. I would say. Chris is Robert. it the favorite? Uh, yeah, no, I liked it a lot. So I mean, I. Uh, the interior is pretty amazing, I have to say. That's the best, I'll agree with Mark, that's the best interior of any of the ones I've seen. I will say that I, I don't like the exterior as much as I like the interior because uh, there's something about the ship that just doesn't say sort of 
powerful gunship to Aggressive. me in the way that, say, a couple of the other designs have said. Yeah. I mean, I prefer the exterior of um, uh, the Shard Collective ship. I prefer the exterior of the Talon One in terms of that sort of like kind of beefy, beefy Goliath. sort of gunship, uh, gunship vibe. Right. Uh, but, Do you think there's yeah. anything that can be added that would? Yeah, push it's, it's it kind of it's weird. Uh, it's it's weird because you know the the modeling and the detail in it all is all great. Same. So I'm not criticizing that. I mean, yeah. like it just in terms of modeling, detail, technical ability. I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's that's a triple A asset. There's no doubt that could sit in any triple A game. It could sit totally. in Star Citizen. That's yeah. that's not the issue. It's really actually just a. Uh, like a subjective a style style thing for me. Right. Sure. There's you know the you like the Gundam players. <coughs> I, I'm like uh, I'm I'm like I sort of feel like I don't know it, it, because it's such a big thing and then the the the, the fuselage is sort of this one it's piece. It's here. It just sort of makes it feel sort of like it to me. If looking at the outside, I don't imagine the ship is as big as it really is, right. and as big as it feels inside. It's sort of got a little bit of a TARDIS effect because of that. Yeah. Whereas if I saw some of the other ships, they sort of feel a bit more massive because of their sort of setup on the outside. And I don't know whether that's just because maybe there needed to be some more elements on the exterior that were sort of smaller that you could right. get some yeah. detail. Like you know, for instance, you'd like you look at the back, say on the. Um, uh, the Shimmer Pan ship, and they had those engines on the back, and there was sort of detail on on the sort of nozzles and stuff. Uh, and you don't you don't have those sort of things reading on the exterior. The, of the canopy ship. cockpit seemed like made everything look small. Yeah, I mean, so it sort big. of felt like a small. Yeah, it felt like right. it didn't feel felt like there was a one person right. sort of right. fighter canopy, um, which is I mean, this has been in the ship from the beginning, right? So I've I've liked this ship yep. for a long time for Horseman. I've been a big supporter of it, but. Um, there's, there's just something like that kind of slightly puts me off, but uh, I mean, yeah, the detail inside is amazing. I mean, just the, all the, all the details, just the quality of it, it's it's beautiful. I mean, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm, I, you know, really my only negative is, I don't is, is sort of based in the original concept. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we've seen things from the beginning in the concept and. I mean, there might be some alterations and in, in sort of opinions because as we go along, we like sort of see some of the other ships, and like you said, some things become more apparent when they get into certain stages. So, um, I think our opinions evolve a little bit too. It's the most elegant looking ship of the bunch. I think that's probably why it's not really gunshipy feeling. It's like an interceptor or something, you know. A well, bit I mean, I actually, like they, they did say they mentioned it was like a, some police type vehicle or something, and actually, it kind of did. Feel like that. It yeah. felt like a police yeah, like a sort police of vehicle, yeah. like vehicle spaceship. Uh, it's it's sleek, which is cool. You know, like those big engines on the side don't bother me that much. But um, yeah, I agree. There's like a little I mean, if there was disconnect just, with the size. If there was just some, maybe if there's a couple of things in there that gave you a read on the size. I think it would help. Yeah. Just because. Well, it has those big things on the top too. Those circular things. Yeah. I'm not sure what they do. Um, and they kind of break it up weird, and maybe, you know, like to make it seem bigger, maybe you could shrink the front cockpit window or something, make the yeah, cockpit window smaller. Like that could um, convey a little bit more, you know, size of the ship, like, a, you know, convey a, a bigger size. So props to the interior and the in-game part, obviously. And uh, that was our last team. Okay, guys, so the voting process. Only two teams get to go through. What we're going to do is you're going to rank your teams, the five teams, from your most favorite to your least favorite. The most favorite will get five points, then four points, three points, two points, and one point. Okay. And then we'll tally up the points. All right. All right, let's get it happening. All right, guys, the votes are in. We used a point system, as you know, and here are the results. I can tell you this, one bit amoeba only got a total of five points. Mm. And three dingo, mi dispiace, arrivederci, they only had 12 points. Oh. Um, mm. Shard Collective had the most points of any of our 10 teams with 22 points. Nice. Wow. So congratulations, Shard Collective. Exactly. All right, and then now, so, who is left? Four horsemen or Shimapan? So Shima exactly. Shimapan yeah. or four horsemen. One team had 17 points and one had 19. The team who is moving Jump on. on. <laughs> who do you think? Chris, go on. Oh, um. Four horsemen or Shimapan, quickly. I think. 
Eh, too late, Christmas. Shimmer pin. I think four horsemen. Oh lord. Shimmer pin. Four horsemen. Gee. And the winner is Shimmer Pan. <laughs> <laughs> Shimmer Pan's no, moving on. Shit, so one bit amoeba, three dingo, and four horsemen. It is not over for you guys. You go into the safe pool, and voting is open now. So go vote. All right, guys, so we're now entering the final phase, which is the in-game, in-engine implementation. And we will also find out next week the two teams who are saved. And Chris Smith will have an update on the Mustang. See you next Friday. See you next Friday. Later. Bye.